And so he explains in verse 37. He who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seeds are the sons of the kingdom. The tares are the sons of the wicked one. The enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are the angels. Therefore, as the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of this age. The Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and those who practice lawlessness, and will cast them into the furnace of fire, and there will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Isn't this a wonderful Mother's Day message? <laughs> Aren't you glad you invited your mom to church today? <laughs> then the righteous will shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. So Jesus tells us here the meaning of the parable. Jesus tells us, He's the one who sows the seed. He tells us the field is the world. The seed that Jesus sows in the world are believers. Here they're called sons of the kingdom. Jesus spreads believers all over the world as a witness for him and his kingdom. He sends believers all over the world to proclaim the gospel, the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ to all nations and to make disciples. Uh, the book of Revelation tells us that in heaven around the throne of God, worshiping will be worshipers out of every tribe, tongue, people and nation. So people from all over the world will hear the gospel, put their faith in Jesus Christ and be saved. But the devil, we're told here, the devil also sows in the world. And the devil sows tares in the same field. This is important. The devil sows tares among the wheat. Not in a separate field, but mingled in among the wheat. The sons of the wicked one are sown among the sons of the kingdom around the world. Now, here's what Jesus is saying through this parable. Please don't miss it. Wherever Jesus is working in the world. The devil will attempt to spoil the impact of his work by planting tares among the wheat. The tares are people. Listen, the tares are people who claim to be Christians. The tares are people who uh, identify as Christians. They profess faith in Jesus Christ, but they're not true believers. They say that they're Christians. And, and, and they kind of look like Christians. Remember, I said the tares sort of look like wheat early on. So they, they look like Christians, they sound like Christians, they, they go to church. But they're not true believers. They're not born again. They, they're, they're not regenerated by the Holy Spirit. There's no real fruit of the Holy Spirit or fruit of the word of God in their lives. And, and what he's telling us here is that Satan intentionally mingles false Christians in among the true believers in an attempt to harm the genuine work that Jesus is doing through his disciples in the world. This is Satan's strategy. This is Satan's strategy to undermine God's work. Wherever God is working in the world, Satan comes into that work by sending his own people into the midst of it to ruin it. And to spoil it. He sows tares among God's wheat. The sons of the wicked one among the sons of the kingdom and they're growing kind of side by side. They're mingled together. It's not easy to to uh, to tell them apart. It can be really difficult to tell the difference between God's wheat 
and Satan's tares because they, they look similar. And they're side by side. Now, why does the devil do this? Well, Jesus tells us in verse 41. Look at verse 41. The devil does this to offend. To offend. Now, the Greek word here is scandalon. Is scandalon. Now, I, I attended a Youth for Christ event this past week, and the keynote speaker was Tim Tebow. And Tim Tebow referred to three Greek words in his talk and I thought, man, Tim Tebow is dropping Greek words here in his speech. I better step up my game a little bit. So the Greek word here is scandalon. <laughs> From which we get the word scandal or scandalous. This word, listen, if you're taking notes, this word can mean to cause to fall or stumble. Or it can also mean to draw someone away into error or sin. To draw someone away into error or sin. So get the picture of what Jesus describes here, of what's going on. Whenever Jesus is doing a work, people are hearing the gospel, repenting of their sins, committing their lives to Christ, making disciples. The devil will try to ruin that work by mixing in false believers who will cause people to stumble in their faith or even to draw people away into doctrinal error and sin. And look at verse 40. The devil will do this until the end of the age. Until the great white throne judgment described in Revelation 20. This is not something the devil did back in the first century or in the book of Acts. This is something, this is a tactic that the devil is still using today to try to undermine the work of the Lord in the world. Today, the devil is sowing tares among the wheat. And so this is important for us to understand this. It's important for us to know how to distinguish between wheat and tares. How do we identify a son of the kingdom from a son of the wicked one? I mean, they, they look similar. They both profess faith in Jesus Christ. So how can you tell a tare from the wheat?